Hey guys, Retro Dude here. Thanks for visiting my channel again, where we take a look at all things retro and cool. Though it might not always be retro, it is always cool. I've been reading a lot about a newly released emulator for Android. And this got me pretty excited because it's a PS2 emulator. I haven't seen that many of those uh, on Android. I've only been able to play PS2 games reliably on a computer. So I figured we'd take a look at it and reveal it. All right, first of all, the name is Aether SX2. It is an Android-based emulator. Now, you can download it if you have an Android phone from the Google Play Store. However, I'm a little bit more old school, so I like playing it on the big screen. And if you've been with me, you know Nvidia Shield is where it's at for me. So luckily, Nvidia Shield is an Android device. Now, it's not available on the Google Play Store on Nvidia Shield because it's a TV-based Android and those apps need to be okayed to be able to land on the Nvidia Shield. So I actually had to sideload it. If you guys wanna check out the tutorial on how to do that, check out the description below. I actually made a how-to blog post on how to load it onto the Nvidia Shield. It's not really complicated, it's pretty easy to do. Mainly it's just setup. I'm really excited. This being a beta, it's really well done. I never thought the Nvidia Shield would be able to handle PS2 emulation as well as it does. Now, if you don't know what beta is or what it means, it just basically says that the emulator isn't ready for prime time yet. So that only means it's gonna get better once it is ready for an official release. I did test it on the Nvidia Shield. I did not test it on any of my Android devices because I wanna test it on a big screen. So basically this is gonna be a, how does Aether run on Nvidia Shield video. Now, like I said, the setup was fairly simple enough. Uh, you just have to download the APK file, put it on a USB drive, along with the ROMs, along with the PS2 BIOS. And from there, you just install it onto the Nvidia Shield. Now, one thing that I can tell you is, it being in beta, uh, the app doesn't even show up once it's installed on your apps. You actually have to go to the, to the settings and view all apps and it shows up right there. So eh, it's kind of an extra bit of legwork to do, but it works. <laughs> I love the Nvidia Shield, but the controls that the Nvidia Nvidia had, I'm not really too partial with. They were a bit clunky. They didn't feel right. So for my tastes, I actually prefer the DualShock controllers, and I went on a crusade. I'm trying to pair those up with the Nvidia Shield. First thing I tried was just pairing them up through Bluetooth. Now this works, however. If anybody knows Android and is a gamer, you know about what's called Android lag. So over the course of say minutes, while you're playing through a Bluetooth controller, you start noticing uh, a lag that comes from playing video games. And over the course of time, it gets even worse. On the Nvidia Shield, it's horrendous. The last game that I tried playing was East. It's actually an app on Nvidia Shield and I paired it up and was playing perfectly when I first started, but it got to the point where the guy would take like 10 steps before I could actually turn another another way on the Bluetooth. So it essentially made games unplayable if you were gonna go that route. I got pretty frustrated, I, I don't know what to do. I even thought about running a 25 feet USB just to connect it directly to the Nvidia Shield. But I actually came across a little device. Let me show you which device it is. I actually came across this little device. It's called an 8-bit do. Now what this device does is it connects through to the USB port of your Nvidia Shield. Uh, it pairs up your DualShock controller and has direct access to it. It eliminates that Android lag completely. So you're still able to play wirelessly without the lag. I absolutely 
positively love this little device. It gave me exactly what I needed for my NVIDIA Shield. And I think it runs only like 20 bucks. So if you guys wanna get one, I actually have it on the descriptions below. You're gonna thank me once you start actually trying this out. All right, now with that out of the way, now we got the setup. Now, now we got it installed on the NVIDIA Shield. Now you know the little crooks that have to go with it. Now you can play with the DualShock controller. How does it run? The first game that I actually wanted to try because I wanna play it is Silent Hill 2. So initially starting the game, I noticed one thing that all Android emulators have is the virtual gamepad or the pad on the screen, which I hate being that I actually just use a DualShock controller to play with it. So I went to the settings and removed it. It is removable. Even though it's in beta, the menus are pretty solid, pretty well laid out. Not too hard to remove them. So from there, let's go on into the game. First thing I noticed on the Silent Hill 2 is the cutscene were running a little bit slow. Uh, still watchable, like you can still see. Still watchable, but it got a little bit concerning and I'm thinking uh, it's probably not gonna play too good. However, once it got out of the cutscenes, the game was playing perfectly fine. I didn't notice much of a slowdown maybe here and there's a couple of skip frames but other than that it played perfectly well and i played about i'd say like a 30 minutes to an hour into it i went into the town i got into the first monster meeting and then i went into the apartments that's about as far as i got but it played perfectly fine and lo and behold uh it got my controller settings perfectly. I didn't have to set up anything on the controller, just straight up pick up and play. I love that. The other game that I actually tried playing was Kingdom Hearts. Now I actually have the Kingdom Hearts collection so it's not like I'm dying to play that game but it's a game that I enjoyed playing so I figured you know what if I can play it on my Infinity Shield just pick it up and play I'm definitely gonna put it on there so I went ahead and did that and again the game played very well. The cutscene played great. I hadn't listened to that to that song in a long time and I really like it. I gotta get that into my playlist as well. My game's playlist as well, by the way. Um, and then I got into the to the island where they, where you first start out. That's when I noticed a bit of a lag in certain situations and I actually tracked it down. I thought it was weird that it was only lagging when you were looking in a certain direction. And I realized that if you're looking at the waterfall, it actually dropped frames and dropped like 10 frames instantly. So like just playing around with the, just playing around going back and forth, I would turn back and turn back to the waterfall and I, and I would drop. This is actually great in a sense because I was actually able to play around with the settings on the emulator. And with that, I was able to see if there were other settings that I could fix a little bit. And yeah, I did come up on a couple of settings that actually fixed it. Yeah, in the systems tab, there's like a performance thing on it. And in the bottom, it has EE cycle rate that like an underclock thing so that I switched it to 60% and I changed the EE cycle skip to moderate or two so basically I underclocked it and it did drop the frames however it made the games playable 
or rather it made uh, Kingdom Hearts more playable when you were looking at that waterfall. It drives me crazy when I'm looking one way and it's playing perfectly fine and then I turn the other way and it starts slowing down. Uh, so I, I wasn't going to be okay playing a game like that. So underclocking it actually eliminated that. It didn't really eliminate it, but it did tone it down to where it was barely perceptible. Now the game isn't running as optimal as I would like, but it is definitely playable. The other game that I actually played was God of War. Now this game is unplayable with the settings that it comes with. However, with the settings that I'm suggesting, underclocking it, it is playable. It plays at around, I'd probably say like 26 frames. So you do still notice a bit of a, again, not optimal, but it is definitely playable and it isn't slow. I got through pretty much the whole beginning of the stage. I, I just didn't beat the Hydra. So that's as far as I got to it, but it was definitely playable and it was an enjoyable experience. When it slows down, especially if you're just trying it with the normal settings that it has on it, it is gonna be a, a drag. You wanna change those settings with the God of War because it's not gonna be playable otherwise. PS2 games and Nvidia Shield, you're definitely going to want to get yourself a flash drive. And Nvidia Shield is a bit finicky on the flash drives that it gets. I've actually tried like three or four others, and with mixed results, honestly, most of them have failed pretty badly to the point where they're just corrupt. I don't know how Nvidia handles that memory issue. Uh, mostly, it came down to when I tried using the flash drive as internal memory. It's pretty easy to do on the NVIDIA Shield, but it tends to create a lot of headaches. So ultimately what I just ended up doing was, well, I wanted the flash drives for the ROMs anyway, so I still make it as an external memory. So basically you don't need to format it to the memory of the NVIDIA Shield, just use it as a flash drive and you're good to go. And you can connect the, the flash drive and to the computer, load up what you need to load up, and then connect it to the NVIDIA Shield and install it from there. Uh, it just, for me, it saves a lot of headache. And these are the flash drives that I actually prefer the most. The Nvidia Shield reads it fast. It's pretty well built. They've lasted me a while, at, at least a year or two, uh, versus the others, because I had a Samsung one that just burned out like in four months or something like that. Uh, if you're gonna be playing PS2 games, I definitely recommend you get in like a 256 gigabyte one. It runs around 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, it's, it's a good purchase in my opinion. Again, if you wanna get these, uh, I'm actually gonna be providing a link in the description below. So another one of the settings that I actually changed on it is the upscale multiplier, I changed it to from 1X to 2X and it actually made the games look much more crisp they look in like an HD. You could probably change it a little bit more. I did get all the way up to four times, but I didn't really notice a difference. So I just stuck with two because that's basically where I noticed the difference and it didn't go crazy laggy because I went like maxed if the system took a hit and then yeah, it does take a hit when you change that. So putting that two times is optimal for me. That's, that's where I saw the difference. From two to three, I didn't really see a difference, so I just kept it at two. Uh, the games look good and they run good. Why not, right? Now, another thing that you probably want to do is if you're going to be getting the ROMs or just barely downloading the ROMs, getting the PAL versions is probably a little bit better than getting the North American versions because they run at a lower frame rate. And so PAL versions run at 50 frames and North American versions run at 60 frames. So they'll be less intensive on the emulator itself. 
So every little bit helps when you're trying to get these games loaded onto a machine that they're not supposed to be played on, right? So I definitely recommend you guys checking that out. And let me know if it actually works for you because all of the ROMs that I had weren't PAL. They were actually North American version. So that's one thing that I'm really curious to see if it does actually make a difference. Now, lastly, if you are going to be installing it on your NVIDIA Shield uh, and you need a little bit of help on that, go to my blog. It's in the descriptions below. I have a how-to on how to actually load it onto your NVIDIA Shield. It's pretty simple to do. It's pretty easy setup, especially if you have all the things that I have, like the 8-bit do and the flash drive. It shouldn't take you much more than, say, 10, 15 minutes to actually get everything loaded up after you've gotten your ROMs and your BIOS. And if you find any of the settings that I didn't play around with to actually help out the performance, leave it in the comments below because I'm really excited to play this emulator and I want to run it as best as I can because I am going to be playing it. Silent Hill 2, here I come. But for being a beta version, it actually runs really well. I am really excited to see where this emulator actually goes from here. You know it's going to get a lot better before its actual official release. So I'll keep you guys posted because I am going to be running this thing through its paces. And every time it gets updated, I'm going to try to update on the blog. So you want to keep looking back at that if you're interested in playing PS2 games on your NVIDIA Shield. Thanks for joining me again. If you guys want to check out any other emulators, leave it in the comment section below. I, I actually love playing around with the emulators and I think Aether was really exciting. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit me with a thumbs up, and as always, stay retro.